this video is going to be a bit different to the other ones. I'm going to do a proper rundown bike check of my Cervelo R5. Snap first. as I had a really manic day yesterday with a shoot for Shimano, more on that to come. You may have known that I used that bike for when I was doing the Everesting Challenge earlier last year and there's been some significant changes to the bike since then. I'll put a little bit here from Jimmy basically explaining all about the setup of that bike which I think to be honest is probably better than I could. Start with the frame. The frame is a Cervelo. <laughs> it doesn't say anything else. It's literally a Yumbo Visma team bike. But under under there, wow, oh, this is so, this that is stuck fun. so well. Jumbo Vizzy. What is Yumbo Visma? It's a 54 centimeter <laughs> Cervelo. They've got like numbers, haven't they? So it's like a three or a six. It's an S R series. S is it R? It's an R series. It's an R3. How about I'll say all of the numbers and you can just cut the one that is. R1, R2, R3, R4. Yellow, yellow, black. No, but it's not actually available. Thanks to Chris's Instagram account, we've confirmed that this is a Cervelo R5. It weighs 6.8 kilos, 6.8, with bottle cages and pedals. It's the prototype that they got Yamaha Visma to test out before they released it. I basically ended up with Vingegaard spare frame. It's raw carbon and they do, it's like a, a, basically like an ink transfer. So if you look at the the dark on it, you can see the carbon fleck through it and the patterns created from honeycombs, basically. You're out of breath talking yeah. to me. So you should probably stop talking to me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of the challenge. Good luck with the rest of your day. <laughs> Durace pedals, fancy bastards. I'm assuming when you buy a Cervelo, you also get a, it's like a frame set plus aero seat post, which is matches the frame and a Cervelo stem as well, awesome. which has the, all the pieces that Ooh. integrate with the bars and the headset. So the bar and the stem is definitely Cervelo because it says it on it. Definitely all very carbon as well. That stem is very nice, isn't it? Yeah, 120 mil stem, carbon bars with a bit of a flat top mm. to them. Comfy. I've always liked that. A couple of things to say about this bike is first of all, it's a prototype frame. So Cervelo updated the R5 a couple of years ago and there were some takeaways from the previous one to what they wanted to bring into this version of the R5. So a few things they wanted to change from this R5 to the previous one is comfort, weight, aero, and tire clearance. Now tire clearance on this bike, you could comfortably get 30 mil tires on it, probably 34s. Uh, Cervelo have a really good bit on their website which sort of breaks down tire clearance recommendations based on the measured size, not on the tire manufacturer's size that they state. Different tires, different rims, it all ends up measuring slightly differently. So they've basically done this thing where you can check based on what it measures at. Really, really useful. And the aero elements of the bike, all the cabling is integrated. They've created this chin, as they call it, on the fork. So the fork is more integrated into the rest of the frame and it's a much cleaner transition on the rear stays to the back end of the bike as well. Bottom bracket, standard Cervelo, super big, chunky and stiff, really, really good for power transfer. And the down tube is chunky as well, which really helps with that as well. Now, as I said, this is a prototype one. Uh, this is one of a very small batch that they produced for Yumbo Visma to test out before the bike was released. It was originally first leaked 
at Flesh Wallon, I believe, uh, with Primoz racing on it. And then it appeared in the Tour de France in this colorway. I say teased and leaked. It's pretty obvious that it was a Cervelo. It's got a massive Cervelo logo written down the front of it. So I've changed this bike a little bit since the Everest's uh, to be simple about it. New group set, new wheels, and an inline seat post as opposed to the 15 mil setback seat post that wasn't it previously. I basically have now gone to Ultegra 12 speed, which you can see the sort of shifters here. They're really nice ergonomic shape. Uh, the 12 speed power meter as well. This one is the Ultegra 5034 and I've got an 1130 cassette I think on the back, something like that. I'm sorry the bike is filthy. It absolutely hammered it down while I was riding home. So 12 speed, uh, compact chain rings on the front and a sort of a mid-sized cassette on the rear. You can fit a large cassette on the rear if you want to, but for me, uh, for like climbing and sort of general riding that I tend to do, this works really, really well. I, I think that a compact thing for anything that's climbing is great. I am a big fan. Some of the things I really like about the 12 speed group set, as I say, is the shifters more than anything. The shape on these shifters is so much more ergonomic than the previous generation and the braking feels a lot more responsive they've taken like some of the technology that was in the grx group set brakes brought it into these shifters as well and ergonomically as i say they just feel a lot nicer they kind of slightly curve inwards which feels nicer to hold and um, you have the top buttons here as well which you can set up for shifting which is what how i've got it set up at the moment there's these two buttons that are here and here shift through the rear neck Standard with the front shifters, this is the rear and the other side is the front. Also I have these here which are the sprint shifters which will allow you to change the rear mech as well. Anyway in terms of setup for me I'm running a 54 frame and basically I have quite a short torso and long arms and legs so I have to have a lot of seat posts and a lot of stem. Uh, it looks really good, it's true, but it for me also it's, it works with my fit and it's was comfortable. I would recommend, you know, go to a bike fitter and get them to recommend the size of bike that's appropriate for you. That's the best way to do it. But for me, this setup with the longer stem and a lot of seat posts works really well. And I like the feel of it. It feels a bit more fun, a bit more twitchy, a bit more racy. And yeah, it's all personal preference at the end of the day. As I said, I've got an inline seat post now, which is basically a straight one instead of having a setback on here. And the stem is a 130 carbon stem. This is Sabello's own stem and handlebar system they provide. So everything's integrated. The hosing is basically goes into this channel here, which allows you to basically service it quite easily and get to those kind of points of the bike. And then it goes into the stem and then you have like a D-shaped steerer tube. So the hoses run down the front effectively. But with the new 12 speed group set, you have no wires to the shifter. It's completely wireless. They have like a coin cell battery inside them, which basically negates the need for another cable. And so you only have the hydraulic hoses that are running internally of the bike here. The rest of the system is basically set up from a battery, which is in the seat post. And then the, so the battery in the seat post and then the cable basically go down to the front and rear mech. But all of the sort of brains of the group set are in the rear mech itself now, as opposed to having a junction box internally. Crank lamp. So I ride a 170 crank, that's what I ride on everything apart from my time trial bike. That's what I'm used to, I really like it, it feels nice. I think quite often people ride too long on cranks and so it's like the first thing I'd always suggest changing. Handlebars are 40 centimeters wide and that's the same thing. A lot of bikes come with quite a wide handlebar and that just works for me having those nar slightly narrower handlebars. I always think it should be kind of roughly the width of your shoulders basically. I'm not a fitter so don't quote me on that but that's how I like it. Now the other big change on the bike for me is the wheels. These are Reserve 3437s, which is a kind of like climbing wheel set. And the browning is really subtle, really simple. Again, excuse the bike for being dirty. But yeah, 34 on the front, 37 on the back. That responds to the depth of the rim. And so you have a slightly shallower one on the front and a slightly deeper one on the rear. And this is something that they've tested in the wind tunnel and it kind of basically helps with the stability of the bike in crosswinds and stuff. These are reserves lightweight wheel option and they do various different depth options available. And I've got these set up with a 28mm Schwalbe Pro 1 
on the front and rear. So there's like, if I go around here, you'll see tons of clearance still to potentially fit a larger tire if you wanted to. The saddle is the Pro Stealth Superlight saddle. It's a 152 in width. It's a saddle I basically use variations of this saddle on all of my bikes. I really like this one. Super comfortable. It's a really lightweight version of it. And yeah, it works for me. Saddles is always something that's quite hard for people to get right. And I'd recommend just going and talking to a bike fist to work out what works best for you. And the rear pack is from Atticus. This should be on everyone's bike. Bottle cages are from Pro, which I've got my Sterka water bottles on there. Always use big water bottles because you don't drink it up. And the computer setup. So the mount is from Stello. They make this like integrated system, which works on like a GoPro mount. And you just put it into the stem like so. And the computer I'm using is the Garmin 1040 Solar, which I think you can see charges itself up using these little bits here and it just seems to last for absolutely ages. Pedals, Shimano's pedals, they're great, can't bolt them. But the only road pedals I've used, I've not really tried any other ones, but I really like the Shimano ones, so I don't really see the point of changing personally. And yeah, about the paint job. So this is effectively a water transfer. And what that means is that it's the raw carbon, which you can kind of pick up in the sun. And then this pattern, which is a honeycomb pattern based on uh, Yumbo's branding effectively. But they tested a few bits in it, like how they would brand the bike with the R5 logo there and if it was things they're gonna use. But it also has the Team Yumbo Visma emblem here. Like, comment and subscribe.